Just as I'm about to call out to them, someone grabs me from behind. Oh, bye! Hey guys, it's Ren! And Lid! And we're back today with Backstage Pass. And this time, can you guess who we're going for? Um, here's a hint. A lot of people wanted you to do him next. Us to do him next. Not you. Not you specifically. Do him whenever you want, if you have the game. <laughs> we're going for Matthew. Hey, hey. Blondie, Blondie McBlonderson Blushy McBlusherton. Let's get started. Okay. Whee! And then we skip a lot. Skip, skip, skip to my left. Yes. Tell Benito to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dad's in the hospital. Dad's in the hospital. Cobalt's a prof. John is an asshole. Oh, hold on. Cool. Boy, we have boy, a job. You are the... Hooray. Oh, no. Too far, too no, far. No, go backwards. I went too far. Too far. I mean, go backwards. Don't go far. I can hear more talking. Whatever it is, or whoever it is, sounds excited. Actually, it sounds like several excited people. I walk faster. Maybe I can catch up with them and ask for directions. The voices are getting nearer. Just as I'm about to call out to them, someone grabs me from behind. Oh, bye! I feel a hand clamped firmly over my mouth as someone pulls me back into a dim hallway. Stay quiet and don't move. My heart starts racing. Who is this? Some sort of stalker? Is he here to see one of the actors? Whoever it is, I can't say I like him. Yet! Yet. I try to pull away, but he holds me closer. I told you not to move. I told you to get your hands off my mouth. I clench my fist and give my attacker a firm jab in the stomach with my elbow. His body tightens up, but he doesn't let go. A true professional. Please, don't move. Please? Before I can respond with another jab in the stomach, a group of girls strolls past us. Maybe he went to a different studio? One girl who looks at the leader is scrolling furiously through a set of photos on a digital camera. I really thought I saw him go in here, though. Well, let's keep looking. The other girls voice their agreement and they head off down the main hallway. As soon as they turn the corner, the hand on my mouth relaxes. I tear away and spin around. What's wrong with... I stop mid-sentence at the sight of a young man doubled over and clutching his stomach. Um. Oh. <laughs> I didn't hit him that hard, he did just I? just pouts. <laughs> he's like, mm -hmm. he's, not, he's not even like looking like he's in pain. He's just, aw. He slowly straightens himself. He's 
taller than I expected. Hey, are you okay? Sorry about the, uh, you know... No, it's my fault. I'm the one who grabbed you. It was pretty rude of me to... His face turns bright red as he realizes the full weight of his actions. I'm so sorry! Those girls were chasing me, and then I panicked, and... His voice is barely audible now. Uh, just don't do it again, I guess? Who were those people? I'm not sure. I'm supposed to be filming a commercial, but one of the crew members posted a photo of the studio online. A bunch of them figured out we were here, and I guess they wanted to see the shoots. He fiddles with a strand of his hair and keeps a steady gaze on the ground. And then it looked like they wanted to talk to me, so I kind of ran away. Smooth. <laughs> I'm usually not this bad. They just caught me by surprise. I didn't think anyone would want to talk to me. You didn't think anyone would want to talk to the beautiful, tall, handsome guy? So beautiful, why would anyone speak to me, ever? I don't know why they wouldn't. You're a model, aren't you? How can you tell? Because you're tall AF. <laughs> Perfect skin, nice hair, good posture, and you're tall. Definitely a model. Oh, I there see. There you go. You're really smart. It really doesn't take that much, my dear. No, it's common sense. <laughs> Not really. I just know what models look like. Anyway, uh, my point is that having excited people wanting to talk to you kind of comes with the job, doesn't it? Maybe. But girls are scary. He's so cute. Oh, whoa. Is this guy ten years old or something? No, just introverted. He's gonna catch their cooties. Am I scary? Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Good. You should. Anyway, be I'll be out of your perfectly conditioned hair as soon as you point me in the direction of Studio C. Oh, that's next door. He looks a lot happier now that the focus isn't on him anymore. Just take the main hallway out. It's the building right in front of you. Thanks. By the way, my name's Sean. Oh, um, Matthew. Oh, he blink. Well, thank you for the directions, Matthew, and good luck with the girls and stuff, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. Good luck with the goyles! I hurried down the hallway and over to Studio C. Sean! I was just about to come looking for you. Wait, you are Sean, right? Guy with ponytail. <laughs> All right, Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> A man comes rushing towards me and skids to a halt a few feet in front of me. Yeah, um, sorry, I got a little bit lost. No, 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 it's fine. I'm just glad you're here. I'm the director and producer, Lloyd Newton. It's a pleasure to meet you. Lloyd shakes my hand enthusiastically. I'm not too late, am I? You're not late at all. I was just fretting that you were going to be carted off with those other girls. What girls? Security said a couple teenage girls tried to crash the filming of a commercial next door. I was worried that you were taken away with them. Oh, yeah, I ran into them. No trouble, I hope? No trouble. If you don't count one very skittish model. Great! Lloyd turns and dashes off. I hurry to keep up with Lloyd, but it's hard to match his pace. I have to speed up to a trot so I won't fall behind. So, how much do you know about this project? Only that it's a test shot right now. It's not like you gave me much useful information aside from that. Right. Although we usually call it a pilot presentation. We basically spend one day putting together shots to show networks what the show would be like. If it's good enough, a network will pick it up and we'll get to make a series. We're tentatively calling it Cops and Robbers. Name subject to change. Of course. It's a crime drama. Lots of things blowing up. <laughs> Oh, I see. I try to sound as enthusiastic as him, but my voice sounds flat. Not a fan of explosions? I don't watch TV very often. <laughs> it's probably better for you if you don't. I hear watching violent shows turns you into a criminal. I'm not sure how to respond. He's joking, right? Your job is to make sure all our actors look pretty. He leans towards me and whispers conspiratorially. No easy task, I assure you. Okay, he's definitely joking. The trailers are that way, and I'll see you on set. Lloyd gives me another energetic handshake. I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got. I've heard only great things about you. He bounds off toward the set, leading me to navigate the trailers. Great things, huh? From whom? 
Well, I can worry about that later. The makeup trailer is fairly standard. I do a quick walkthrough to make sure I know the layout. Okay, this actually looks pretty familiar. It's not too different from other places I've worked. I allow myself a small sigh of relief. I can already feel my pounding heart begin to slow down. This might not be so bad. I've worked as mom's assistant on several movies, but taking the lead is such a huge pressure. The door opens slowly, and a familiar looking woman with long brown tresses enters. It takes me a moment to place her, but after a moment's scrutiny, I recognize her as Selena Haraway. She got into acting when she was just a kid and did a series of movies and TV shows, always playing the angelic and energetic child. My parents loved all of her stuff, and I remember wanting to be just like her when I was young. Now that I think about it, I haven't actually seen her in anything in a long time. Selena sizes me up quickly. Is this wardrobe? Sorry, ma'am. Makeup. I'm Sean Gooden. It's nice to meet you. You look rather young. Is this your first gig? Not my first time working on set, but it's my first time being lead artist. Do you plan to make a career out of this? I don't know. It's what I want for now, at least. Selena approaches me swiftly and leans down to look me in the eye. Are you just doing this to pass the time until your big break? What? I'm not sure what you mean. Are you planning to become an actress? Oh! <laughs> no, not at all. That sort of thing definitely isn't for me. Her smile doesn't look very happy. There's a hint of loneliness in her voice. Good for you. I stare at her, waiting for her to say anything else. Um, well, I should let you get to wardrobe. Of course. Selena turns and leaves me alone with my thoughts. Oh boy, I don't think she likes me. Or maybe it's more she doesn't like anyone? I take a moment to lean against the counter and collect my thoughts. The reality of this job finally hits me. Lloyd Newton is really here. Selena Haraway is really here. I can handle this, right? Selena returns and wordlessly seats herself in the makeup chair. I flip on the lights and squint. The lights above the mirror are designed to match the lighting on the set. The switches marked on the panel turn on a series of bright fluorescent bulbs. That's pretty harsh lighting. What kind of scene are we filming? Something in a police station. Right, cops and robbers. I should have guessed. Are you the cop or the robber? Cop of the hard-hitting, tough nature. I can't help but give Selena's frame a skeptical look. She's no stick figure, but it's certainly not the build of someone in a physically demanding job. Selena notices my sideways glance. It's television, honey. You're pretty or you're comedic relief. No one cares about realism. Of course. I nod as quickly as I can. I didn't mean for her to notice, but I don't have a terribly convincing poker face. I'm not sure what else to say, so I finish on the work, focus on the work. I try not to think too hard about what she said. I finish my work and take a step back. All done. Selena inspects herself in the mirror. Thank you. She stands, stretches, and heads for the set. I follow behind her, trying not to get lost. We weave our way through a collection of wooden panels and bright lights. Lloyd waves us over as soon as he sees us. Oh, Selena, my beautiful leading lady. He mimes a kiss on each of her cheeks, then points to a set built to look like the interior of a police station. The boys already put your marks down. Selena nods and quickly navigates her way through the fake police station. Not bad, Sean. Tough and beautiful. I only accented what's already there. I think most of the credit goes to Miss Haraway. No, oh, modesty is for suckers. Next time, tell me how great you are. Lloyd leaps over a pile of wires and races towards one of the cameras without waiting for me to respond. I breathe a sigh of relief. He likes my work. That's the first hurdle cleared, at least. Lloyd makes a small motion with his hands and the recording light above the studio door lights up. Quiet on the set. Rolling. Cops and robbers, scene eight, take one. And action! Selena strides across the set, stopping at the door at the end. She wraps her fingers around the handle, then casts an angry glance over her shoulder. Chief, he's out there killing people without worrying about protocol. We can't keep playing by the same rules. Reset, still rolling? Selena quickly returns to her mark. Action! Cops and robbers, scene eight, take two. Selena follows the same path. 
Chief, he's out there killing people without worrying about protocol. If you won't do anything about it, I will. If you won't do anything about it, I will. Without missing a beat, Selena recites Lloyd's improvised line back. Good, good. Reset. Still rolling. Give me something different. Selena returns to her starting point and closes her eyes for a moment. Action! Cops and robbers, scene eight, take three. At the sound of Lloyd's voice, Selena's eyes snap open. She pulls a gun from her holster and follows the same path across the set. Don't try to stop me. She grabs the door's handle and marches out without another word. Cut! Beautiful. Lloyd leans over the cameraman to check the footage. I rush over to Selena. I'm just gonna touch you up. Selena closes her eyes obligingly, and I add a light layer of powder to her face. All right, reset. We're going again. I scramble out of the camera's view as the rest of the crew gets ready to film again. The rest of the filming follows a similar routine. Each scene is shot multiple times from several angles. Between takes, I touch up any of the makeup that needs to be fixed. Working on a TV show all day proves to be more tiring than I remembered. After what seems like a little more than a few hours, Lloyd announces that we're done. That's a wrap. I hope to see you all again soon. Everyone applauds politely, and the crew begins packing up. Well done, Sean. I knew I could count on you. I'm flattered, but I'm also completely exhausted. You look ready to collapse. Something like that. How do you manage? Hmm. Caffeine, mostly. Oh, and good food. I just found this pho place downtown, and it's amazing! The only place I've been that makes it better is Vietnam. That good, huh? Lloyd gives me a cheerful thumbs up. That good. You should check it out sometime. I will when I'm more awake. Right. Good home and get some sleep. And good work today. Thank you. I pack up my makeup kit and head to the front of the studio. Whoa. The sky outside is already completely dark. Did I really spend all day in here? A blast of chilly wind makes a shiver race through my body. Cold? John appears behind me. I can't tell if he's angry or amused. Instantly, my muscles tighten. I turn away from him before he can see my face. What are you doing here? I speak slowly, trying to make my voice sound calm. It sounds more accusing than anything else. John curls a strand of his bangs around his finger and gazes at it idly. Lloyd's an old mate of mine. I was just popping by to see how filming went. My mind connects the dots quickly. You're the one who gave him my contact info. I'd be lying if I said no. Why? I thought I was selfish and unreliable. You're the only makeup artist in the area I know, and it was rather an emergency. So I'm his last resort. Better than nothing, I guess. I pull my sweater tighter on my shoulders and march toward the bus stop. Where are you going? My school. Why do you care? Do you need a lift? What? You're offering me a ride? It's cold out and you need a lift. I can provide one. It's no more complex than that. So now you're a gentleman? John sighs. You'd prefer it otherwise. Uh, so last time we accepted... I'll be fine. I searched for a reason to get him to leave. Honestly, same. In fact, it was never cold enough for me back home. Back home? Ah, right. You hail from Hawaii as well? That's right. Adam and I grew up in the same apartment complex. Friends from childhood, then? Yes, he's our childhood friend. Friends isn't really the word I'd choose. Oh. Back then, he was the <laughs> annoying kid next door. <laughs> I'm sure he thought of the same of me. What changed you? Why is this guy suddenly so interested in my history? Go away! Get out! Summer stage experience. And that would be... Community theater for children. Hey, we did that! Oh yes, that. <laughs> when I turned 10, my parents signed me up. I didn't have any friends and they thought it would help me be less shy. I was terrified of all the other kids and there was this one boy, Mark, who started making fun of me. Adam stepped in and told him to back off or he'd get a punch in the face. Ah. So he punched the bloke, saved the day, and you've been in his debt ever since. You're lucky to have a real-life knight. He sounds so patronizing. Ugh! In his debt? Because I want this conversation to end, I feel compelled to speak up for myself. Actually, Mark punched Adam in the face, and then I kicked Mark in the, uh... My sentence trails off as I realize what I'm about to confess. That doesn't sound very shy to me. He's definitely amused. 
And it sounds like he's definitely into the idea of getting kicked in the balls. Oh, John, you kinky motherfucker, go away. I mean, usually I'd say come here, but you're you, so go away. It's not exactly my proudest moment. Things sort of get bottled up inside me and then break out all at once. Not sure why I'm being so defensive about this, especially because, frankly, if you ask me, there's nothing to be ashamed of about kicking someone in the balls. If they're being mean to you. Well, okay, yes, yes. I mean, obviously if you go up on the street to somebody and you kick them in the balls, it's a bad (laughs) idea. Adam was the first person who ever stood up for me, and I felt like it was my fault that he got punched. I had to do something. I can feel my face heating up. This isn't really the sort of story I want to get out. (laughs) Serves you right, fucko. (laughs) Anyway, Mark started crying, but he was too embarrassed to tell the counselors what happened, so Adam and I didn't get into trouble. All the other kids found out, though, and then no one would speak to me. I sigh. So that didn't really help me gain new friends or anything. Adam started treating me a lot nicer after that. I think he was a little scared, to be honest. For a while, we'd say hi whenever we saw each other. And in high school, we actually started having real conversations. It's really not that great a beginning or anything. Friendship out of fear. I wouldn't say that. He stood up for you in the first place, didn't he? That was his own decision. Yes, he's a good baby. John gives me a curt nod and tips his hat, m'lady. Well, here's your bus. I won't keep you. Oh, right. I hop onto the bus and turn around to look at John as the dorks close. He doesn't move from the spot as the bus pulls away. Why do I feel like we bonded more with him now than when we got in his car? I don't. That's why I was just, I was like, literally, I thought we'd just be like, oh, okay, bye, get on the bus. Yeah. Instead, we have a heart-to-heart with John about Adam. (laughs) John, just stop. Maybe it was an Adam point? Maybe, I hope so. I head straight to bed as soon as I get back to my dorm. Today was much more exhausting than I expected. The added surprise of seeing John was especially exhausting. He didn't seem that mad at me, but I still get the feeling he looks down on me. Ugh, I just want to forget about him. Thankfully, it's Friday night, so I get the luxury of sleeping in for once. I turn my alarm clock off, hold the covers over my head, and fall asleep within a few minutes. 